Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for attending. I know you're all busy. You have things to do. Uh, I'm over on the East Coast, so good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Timothy Mitchell. Uh, sometimes I go by the moniker, the latex czar. I'm not really a czar. I do work with latex. I make my own business cards, so then I get to make my, my, up my own titles. Really what I do is I work with all facets of latex technology and have since the introduction of the technology 10 years ago. Latex has been through three incarnations. We're in Gen 3 right now. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cover the latex technology, how the ink works, the print heads, all of the key components on the printer. The printer itself, as you can see, it's been running behind me. The features of the printer our cutter and how the cutter works. And then also I'm gonna discuss the software, which is key to how the integration of everything works. Because there's three pieces to print and cut. The printer, the cutter, and the software. And the software drives everything. You know, the software is telling everything what to do. And no part of those three is less than the other. They have to work together as a single unit and that's what we built in our new print and cut. Everything is designed to be integrated even though we have a HP printer, an HP cutter powered by Suma, and an SAI Flexi software, it's all integrated. So I have a lot to cover. I'm going to move a little quickly, and uh, hopefully I'll have time at the end to answer questions. Also, we have uh, my HP compadres, Dennis and Paul. I believe they're both on the line. So if you want to type in questions, those guys should be able to answer if you have to leave the call early or something like that. All right, so let's get started. First of all, what HP is fundamentally is we are an ink technology company. We invent all of our own inks, and we also invent and manufacture all of our own printheads. In fact, the printer you see behind me right there is 100% HP. It is HP printhead, which drives everything, HP ink, and then also HP printer. We manufacture everything ourselves. These print heads are thermal print heads. They've been around for almost 40 years now. We have all the patents on thermal print heads. We invent them. We use it from our multi-million dollar web press, which you can't see, which is just to the next to me in my demo center, as well as little, you know, register printers. All your desktop printers. You pull the print head out and put a new one in. Same principle. These are user replaceable water-based print heads. Okay? User replaceable water-based print heads. They're inexpensive, they're disposable, it's a consumable, they're easy to use, they're 1200 by 1200 DPI. So in all modes, fast or slow, you are always going to be printing at 1200 DPI. Mm. Also, 12 picoliter drop for all of the print heads. All of the print heads are going to use a fine drop with a high resolution. Whether you're running it at 6 pass or you're whether at 20 pass, you're always going to have a high resolution with a low or a small drop size. That's very different from piezo technology, for example, which is going to change resolution and it's going to change drop size the faster you go. We do not. Also, latex technology is all water-based. It is an extension or a continuation of traditional pigment-based aqueous printing. What we've added is a latex component that gives all of our prints outdoor durability. So it has all the advantages you would associate with traditional aqueous printing, but then it also has the durability that you can put it outside. What kind of durability? For example, we have 10-year warranties in excess for high-intensity prismatic or highway signage, but we also have a 7-year warranty with 3M for vehicle wrap. Don't let anyone kid you that we don't have long-term outdoor ability because we're a water-based thing. We have the best outdoor durability on the market. It's excellent for scratch resistance, scuff resistance, and long-term color fastness. Those have all been proven, not just by our standards, but by independent standards. 3M's MCS program is 3M's evaluation of our products on a vehicle laminated with their system. And we score extremely high on all those evaluations. So this is truly outdoor durable. The print head also, user replaceable. So standing behind me, I got the printer running. Let's say I do something dumb, and believe me, we all do this. I made a mistake. I loaded in properly. The material's not compatible. Something. Print head comes out. You've all done it. The edges are up. You catch it. You got a head crash, okay? It happens. 
With this, they're extremely durable. They're very, very resilient. These things do not fall apart. Second, if you do tear it, let's say you tore the little meniscus on here. You know what? I take it out. I put a new one in. I'm back up and running in 20 minutes. It does all its own alignment. I'm moving. I'm finishing the job. I'm going to close out the day. I don't have a $3,000 bill. I don't have to call somebody and wait for them to get here. I grab one off the shelf, put it in, click it, shut the lid. I'm back up and running again. That type of ease of use and ease of maintenance, I think it's really key for me. I've only really maybe taken out three print heads in about 10 years, but it happens. And when it does, you just kind of go, I can't believe that, but I'm out $125 and I'm out about a half an hour. That's a very different proposition than if you were to have a piezo head, which is not user replaceable and tends to be very expensive. In many cases, you're looking at a $2,000 repair just to have somebody come out, plus you have a week downtime. Another huge advantage with this print head, and I'm going to bring up another little tool here. A huge advantage for this print head is the print head itself is, um, is water-based and water-based technology. Uh, let me give you an analogy. Water-based technology is like owning a cactus. You put the cactus on top of the printer and you leave it alone. You try not to overwater it. If I come in on a long weekend, you know, I've been out for like a trade show, been gone for a week or more and the printer just sits there. It goes into hibernation, does nothing. I'm going to walk up to the printer. I'm going to turn it on. The printer is automatically going to initiate a protocol using an optical drop detector. This is built into the printer. What the optical drop detector does is it says, is that nozzle functioning? Yes or no? Okay, try it again. Yes or no? If it's no on both occasions, we set the nozzle aside and we replace it mapped out with another nozzle. Each of these print heads has 2,112 nozzles. We have a huge redundancy of nozzles because the way thermal uh, technology works is we have far more nozzles in the given area than a piezo does. It allows us to replace nozzles with other nozzles very easily. The optical drop detector is an automatic patented system that checks if the nozzle is active and if it is not, replaces it with another nozzle. If you had enough nozzles in an area that were out to form a cluster and the print, the optical drop detector knew there was a big enough cluster and could not replace them, it will automatically throw you a message on the screen and says, you have a print quality problem. You might want to clean the print heads. What that means is it's telling me before I have a banding issue that I have a banding issue. So I stop the printer. I do a cleaning. Usually that gets it all back up and running. In a worst case scenario, if you have enough use through the print head and it's exceeded its expected life, you take it out, put a new one in, it will automatically go through the process and now your print heads are tip top again. A nice thing about latex is your print heads are always operating within a very high degree of quality. It's not like you're loading the print head and then everything is getting worse and worse where you have to go slower and slower all the time to try to hide banding. You don't have that with latex. The print head is either optimal or it's gone. And that's kind of the way it works. And when we do our pricing, all of our pricing includes the ink, the print heads, and the cleaning cartridge. So we calculate that this will get replaced. I replace mine here about once a year. This will get replaced roughly every four liters. But we build that into the pricing. When we say 21 cents a square foot at 100% coverage, that means that the print head's included, the cleaning cartridge is included, which I'll show you in a second, as well as the ink. It's an all consumable price. We're not going to sell you that you don't replace print heads. If you have a piezo, you're going to replace print heads too. But let's say two or three years down the line. But then when you do get that bill, each print head is, you know, $2,500. And then that has to be overall amortized into the cost of operation. We build that in automatically. Plus, you're not going to see a big ink tank. You have very minimal waste. The printer does not need to constantly be purged. Owning a solvent printer is a little bit like owning a dog. The minute you buy the dog, you are committed to caring for the dog all the time. If you come in on a Monday after a long weekend, it's print and purge day. 
you have to constantly force ink through those print head nozzles or it's going to clog. With the latex, you do not have that issue. It can sit there for long periods of time. It's perfectly fine. I have had printers that I put into crates, ship them to trade shows. They sit in a crate for a month. I roll them out, plug them in, clean the print heads a couple times. I'm up and running. If that were a solvent printer, every single thing in that would be dead. The print lines, everything would be clogged. It would be a nightmare. I don't have those nightmares because I have water-based inks. Water-based inks are extremely re resilient. They're easy to use. They're user-friendly. I rarely ever get ink on myself. Mostly I could do this job in a three-piece suit. It's just too hot around here, and I don't want to wear a three-piece suit. So working from that, optical drop detector, print head. These are two key technologies. There's a few other pieces of the puzzle. We have automatically here, this is an OMOS. This is an optical media advanced sensor. This is also highly patented. What that means is when the print rolls out, we measure how far it rolls and we get a perfect step alignment every time. It's digitally recorded, like a photograph basically of the back of the media. This also serves on a 365 and larger where you can uh, do double-sided printing. And this is the OMOS. We also have a spectrophotometer. Now, this printer here uses a densitometer. It's a line sensor as a densitometer to do color calibrations. And that's what you have down here. What I did to start this media is I loaded a new media, okay? It's not on the printer's menu. But I know that it's on the media locator. We have a thing called the HP Media Locator, which is, I think we're up to 750 different medias from every company you can think of, all of them. And what, when you want one, like in this case, I picked the media, downloaded it. It downloaded straight into the printer from the printer panel. And then the first thing I do is I hit color calibration. It takes the media, performs a thumbprint for this media for this day, and remembers it. That's important because in a month from now, when I want to load this again, I'm going to run that calibration chart. It's all automatic. And it's going to remember what the original fingerprint looked like. And then it's going to read those charts again and say, okay, these are a little different. Let's match them up to the original fingerprint. This is a proprietary HP color technology that we build into all our printers. Nobody has anything like this. And then on the 365 on up, we include a spectrophotometer that will do ICC profiling in addition to a color calibration. So it will do a full ICC profile suite. This particular printer, I just printed a job on it. You see some barcodes here. Everything here, and I'll show you that in a second a little closer up. Everything here is designed to integrate with this cutter. And the prints themselves have very distinctive markings on them that allow the cutter to see them clearly. Let me cut this and I'll show you what I mean. There's an inline cutter that's built onto the printer itself. It's a straight line cutter, a drag knife cutter. It's pretty strong. And I use this to get a perfect parallel cut to the face of the cutter. So it cut the image, and as I think you can see here, there's two barcodes, top and bottom. And these barcodes are in yellow, and there's another one down at the other side. Our cutter is specifically designed with a barcode sensor so that you load in the media, you press barcode, it finds the job. Here's the key part. It knows if the job is upside down or not. So every time I cut a job, I forget, like, well, how did I take it off the printer? And I can't remember if it's upside down or right side. And then I load it in upside down, and it cuts all the cut lines upside down. You don't have that because the cutter knows automatically that this is this side of it, and that other one down there is the other side of it. And the two together, they can't be mistaken, so it always gets it right. That allows you to always cut properly. So I'm going to set this down a second here and go over to the cutter. Let me close out really quick on a few other things on the printer just so you know about them. This is an edge guard. All of the printers have edge guards built into them. It's a nice handy little tool. The edge guard is metal. I don't need them very often. I only need them on certain materials that tend to curl up around the edges. 
Uh, you can use them on everything if you want to, but it's not really necessary. But we do have them on here, and they're helpful for certain types of media. We also have sort of a modified edge guard, which I made called a butterfly edge guard. The butterfly edge guard is a single edge guard, and I took two of them, and I kind of weld them together. I re-screwed them back as one edge guard. It helps with certain products that have more weight to them that need to go out a little bit longer on the platen. All of our Gen 3 technology, we have new curing heaters. These are convection heaters. Convection heaters come to temperature very quickly. They're very accurate, and they're easy to replace. This changes from the IR technology that we used in Gen 1 and Gen 2. That took too long to warm up. They were harder to replace. They cost more. They were less efficient. These convection heaters are much more efficient. They're easy to replace, and they come to temperature quickly. Inks. All of our inks are 775 milliliters. Okay? We have one printer, a 115, which is half that size. But everything you see here, this is a 315, which is 54 inches. It's a 315 print and cut, and it comes with 775 milliliter ink. So we have good sized ink cartridges. In many cases, they're twice the size of our competitors. We also use a cleaning cartridge. This is an all-in-one device. There's no other consumables. It's ink, print heads, and this. This here has a capping station, it has a wiping station. Over time, you get a little bit of ink in the bottom. This lasts for 14 liters. For me, again, about once a year, I change these out. When you change it out, you slide a new one in, you put a cap on it, standard recycling. Water-based, latex, it's uh, environmentally friendly, it's super friendly for the users. You're evaporating water with the ink, and these are the cleaning cartridges. Those are your three primary consumables. All of the printers are front loaders. So you put the roll here, you tilt it down, it saves you from having to get behind the printer. I save a lot of space that way. I push this thing up against the wall, and that's the end of it. I load from the front, tilt it, feed it through, easy peasy. When the prints are done and I've cut them, I bring them over to the cutter and I load them in. There's a barcode on the cutter. I've already loaded this. I printed a job just a little earlier. I'll send another one over here. This cutter is ready to go. So I'm going to hit barcode. I'm going to roll it forward. Let it come out a little bit. Hit play. So what the cutter is doing right now, this is a SUMA cutter. In my opinion, SUMA makes absolutely tip-top cutters. They're made in Belgium. They only make cutters. They make everything from these drag knives to tangentials to flatbed. Outstanding cutter, very reliable. You absolutely cannot go wrong with a SUMA cutter. It is top-tier cutter in the world. It's very accurate. It uses a special uh, registration system called an OPOS to make sure that what you send and what you cut is exactly the same. The features you see here for any possible deformation are the things you normally see on very expensive flatbeds, like our ESCOs and our Zunes. But they use the same technology here to know that what you send over here in a vector image, it's vector format, is, a, is matching against the file size, and if there's any difference, it's going to adjust for it accordingly. For the most part, I keep my temperatures down. I have very little deformation. But what it's doing now is it's finding all the registration marks, and now it's going to go automatically and cut. It's going to do a kiss cut, and then followed by that, it's going to do a perf cut. When it's done, I got a few in here. The idea is if you get it cut just right, you have a perfect cut, kiss and perf. You do not need to move the blade holder to switch between them. There's a little cut strip there, which is ingenious that they developed which allows you to cut into it a little bit for the perf. It prevents you from dulling the knife. And then the cut strip over time, you just stick another one down there. So that's a consumable. It lets you kiss and perf from the same position without dulling your knife all the time. The other really cool thing about, um, and this is a huge advantage, I think, for latex on decals, stickers, anything. Our scratch resistant is the, resistance is the best in the business. It's not even close. I rarely laminate every, anything. The only things I am laminating are floor graphics, 
because I have to put an anti-slip surface on it, something, some heavy laminate because it's floor and it's, it takes so much abuse. Vehicle wraps, long-term outdoor. That's about it. I rarely laminate wall graphics much anymore. You can in some uh, extended circumstances, but for the most part, I skip it. And I'm going to step over here and grab something and show you what I mean. This is an HP wall covering, right? Has a waffle back. This is commercial grade wall covering. This is what you would use if you were going to do the Hilton hotels, for example. This is industrial. You put paste on it. This is wallpaper hanging. It is called type two. That's your commercial grade wall covering. We meet type two requirements for this wall covering with no lamination. Okay, there's no product that I know of on the market that can say that. The scratch and scuff resistance on latex is so good that you can do commercial grade wall coverings on this product without having to laminate. The type two tests are not just for scratch and scuff. It's for Windex, it's for ketchup, it's for mustard, it's for cleaners, it's for coffee, it's for tea. There's a very long list. They throw everything in the kitchen sink at it, evaluate it, and say yes or no for type 2. We meet type 2 on this wall covering with no laminate. That really, I think, says more than anything else on how durable our products are and how that on a wall, for example, I'll use a thicker matte wall covering like a peel and stick, like say Avery. 2611, and then I just stick it up there with no laminate. I'm looking for sometimes a little thicker on the on the wall film because I'm bypassing the laminate, which sometimes helps me um, uh, install it to have it a little more memory. But other than vehicle wraps, floor, long-term outdoor, I mostly take laminate out of the equation. That's a huge advantage for waste. It's a huge advantage for time. I do have a laminator. It works great. In some cases, I use it. But our print and cut workflow is print, cut. See, while this is cutting, I can step over here, open this job up, and hit send, and I'm going to send the next job. I am always going to have a huge inherent advantage over anyone that's doing an all-in-one when you're printing or you're cutting, but you're not doing both at the same time. The advantage of the all-in-one always was, hey, this is easy to use. I send the job, it rolls back, it cuts it. We tried to make that same ease of use with our system with the barcodes and an integrated software so that for you, that operation is just as easy as if you had an all-in-one system. But we have some other big advantages in our software in that it is truly open architecture software. We partnered with Flexi, and we partnered with Flexi so that the print the, uh, the rip process as well as the design process would both be included and we wanted open architecture. We did not want to have something where you could not add another product or it was closed off to you. We've designed what I think is the best, you know, I call it a sign shop in a box, but if your buddy down the street has an old rolling cutter, okay. All you got to do is get with Flexi and add the rolling cutter and you can put that onto the system. We are not closed architecture. Flexi is an open architecture third-party program and a very good one. Flexi supports everything in the industry. It also supports our print and cut and it's integrated and it's designed for us, but it doesn't mean you're closed off. It also doesn't mean you don't own it. You own this version that comes in the bundle. It's yours. You own it. It's not a rental. It also supports one printer and one cutter. But what if like in my workspace, I have another printer here. I have a bunch of other cutters. I have other printers in the other room. No problem. I paid Flexi an extra $500 and they give me three printers and unlimited cutters. They have upgrade pads and those upgrade pads allow you to expand your sign shop without having to buy new software, finding out, oh, this is a dead end software. I can only one run printer, one cutter forever. Or I can't change out. I can't switch things. Completely open architecture. You own it and it's expandable. And also this version of Flexi is not like super elemental. It's pretty close to all bells and whistles. It supports Pantone colors, for example. So the whole Pantone libraries are in there. And here's the other one. It supports actual profiling. So I have a tool here. I'll roll it out. 
Here's a couple uh, spectrophotometers. This is an I1IO with an I1 in it, and below down here is a Barbieri. I can get these to run and build ICC profiles on this version of Flexi. That's not an introductory version of Flexi. If you have an I1, even a little hand holder, you can build your own ICC profiles with Flexi using a 315. And so if you chose to go that route, you do have that capability and that flexibility. So that's a pretty high-end feature that we're offering in a bundled print and cut software. Right? In a little bit, I'm going to go onto the, onto the screen itself and you walk you through the Flexi and how it works. Uh, I'll let the printer continue printing. Uh, just so you know, we have a nice proofing light here so you can look in here and see everything that's going on. As you see, it came to temperature very quickly. Job is running. Um, I have all the inks here on this end. There's one ink here which might confuse you a little bit, and it says OP. OP means optimizer. Optimizer runs just like an ink. You use about 10% to the other inks. And what we did is we invented a technology that allows the optimizer, which is chemically charged, to attract the drop so that it lands exactly where we want it. And that allowed us to take the heaters and any heat out of the print zone where you don't want heat. We put all the heat here, which is going to cure the latex. Okay, It's going to evaporate the water and it's going to activate the latex so that it's outdoor durable. And what that optimizer does is everything in that print zone is wet. Normally, when you have wet ink in a print zone, it tries to run for the exit. Optimizer, here's how I think of it. The actual distance that you're shooting from a print head to the media is about the distance of, I think, standing like on a seven-story building and dropping a tomato. Now, if you drop the tomato from a seven-story building, it's just gonna, the wind's going to catch it. It's going to go anywhere. If you drop 10 of them, they're going to drop in different places. What we did is we put a cup at the bottom, we put a high intensity magnet in the cup, we put another one in the tomato, so now when you drop the tomato, the optimizer, which is chemically charged, is attracted to the tomato, which is a stand-in for the ink droplet, which is chemically charged, and the tomato goes racing down into the cup every time. And then it stays there, it doesn't spread out and go all over the place. That's optimizer. That's an innovation that HP created because we're always inventing new inks. We're an ink chemistry company, going back to the first thing I said. We make our own print heads, so we're always innovating print heads. Faster, higher resolution, lower cost, easier to use, better maintenance, lower energy, oh, just, like, just like chip technology. And then we also invent new inks that run with them so that everything works in harmony. There's no third parties where everyone's pointing fingers. There's only one place, and it all goes back to us. Right? So printer, cutter. And now we're going to move over to the software, and then I'm going to show you some of the breadth of applications. We also have a very large software suite, so hopefully I can get through everything in the amount of time we have. How are we doing for time over there? Good? I think, yeah, we're good. We're at uh, 10.32, so you're going to go to the Perfect. software now? Yeah. Wonderful. Just wanted to, ch just wanted to check. <laughs> I don't, I, sometimes I lose track of how, where I am and how long <laughs> it's taking. All right. You're good. So, just uh, sure we're getting the, the questions answered that were asked. We had a couple okay. on software. Um, All right. If there are questions, that's fine, and I'll just let Dennis and Paul do them. I, I can't. I'll do some at the end of it, and that's cool too. Yeah. Um, so if you would be so kind, we're going to switch over here to the screen of the Flexi software. You should get that. Okay. Show now. my screen. I got the prompt. Okay, and I'll drop your webcam. Okay. Okay. Yep, you're good to go. Now, can it? Can everyone see my screen? Everyone should be able to see your screen. Uh, I see it over there. Yes, we can. All right. So this is the Flexi rip part. Flexi is two pieces. It's not one piece. It's two pieces. The first part is the rip. You bring files in. As you can see up here, I have, in my case, I have a 315 printer. I have a 335 printer, which is exactly the same except it's 64 inches. And then I have the 54-inch print and cut cutter and the 64-inch cutter. So I have two complete systems running on one program. That's an, an, an extension of the Flexi to give me a little upgrade. When I bring in a file onto here, like the fruit circle here, I double-click it, and I have some options here. Now, I just created a new media, and I built a custom preset for the cutting settings over there. 
the cutting setting for me is going to be how deep do I want the kiss cut and how deep do I want the perf cut? And that is set right there. And once I set those to where I want them, so I'll double click on my perf. That seems good. Hit apply. Okay. I want my kiss cut at 80. Drop that down, hit apply, hit okay, and then I'll hit save over here. What I'm doing is I tend to run directions to the cutter from the RIP software. You can do it with the cutter software takes precedent. You could have the RIP software take precedent. Just figure out which workflow you want to adhere to and not mix them up. So I have this come in here. I can see on the image, you know, what everything looks like. If you want to, you can zoom in on there. But I have a perf cut around the outside and a kiss cut around the inside. It does the kiss cuts and everything first. Over here, I'm going to check and make sure that the printer is using all the right color software. So what I did is I loaded into a roll of 3MIJ40 matte. I downloaded it from the media locator. It has an eight pass, so that's all correct. And then I'm going to double check and make sure that it's using the right profile with it. Again, that's all correct. You have some color mapping and other features here, which are advanced features. For the most part, you don't need to use them. And this is showing you what you're going to print and cut here. Over there, I'm saying, okay, I want to hold the job after I print it or after I cut it. And I want to send it to the 54-inch cutter, not the 64-inch cutter. You could send it to either one. And then this is your interface on how you want to lay the image out. So I bring in one image to here. And then I set it up for 12 times. So if I wanted to set it more, it will keep doing them. I have it set for one inch apart, mainly because I'm using the perf cut. If I was going to use just the kiss cut, I would put these right next to one another because it wouldn't matter. But since I'm perfing them and I'm going to punch them all out and they're all going to be circles, I have to create a little bit of a lattice work here to support the images so that it doesn't structurally undermine the, the adhesive vinyl. And some of these vinyls are very resilient and some are kind of thin and flimsy and you'll get a feel for how far you have to set your space. You waste a little bit of media doing perf cuts, but what you save in is when I'm done, I'm just going to go punch, 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 scoop them into a box, put the box, put the label, put the tape, put the FedEx, send it out, out of sight, out of mind. That is a much better approach than me rolling it up and then trying to peel and weed everything. Customers like nice finished products with their decals. All right, so everything here is ready to go. Just to save myself a little media waste, I'm going to bring that back down a little bit and hit send. And away it goes. All right, so that's your RIP functions. That's fairly straightforward. By the way, HP is handling most of the color here. For the most part, Flexi is laying the files out. It's organizing them. It's creating cut marks or any other things you want to do. But most of the heavy lifting is being done by our own proprietary HP color technology. And Flexi is simply communicating with the printer and taking the information it needs. Moving on. This is Flexi Designer. And this is where I think we get a huge advantage. I am very, very good in Illustrator and Photoshop. But this is, think of Flexi Designer as like a version of Illustrator designed for the sign and display market. Illustrator is not designed for the sign and display market. You can make it do it, but not like Flexi will do it. Let me give you an example. This is uh, a file, which is a, a bitmap, and it has a white background. Now, I created the white background in Photoshop, but you could use GIMP, which is freeware, or you could even use the internal software here and edit this. You know, there's editing technology, bitmap edit toolbar, where you could go in using lasso and eraser and everything and create your own white backdrops. The reason you want a white backdrop is what we're going to do here is this is how I do like my fat heads, right? Like anything I'm going to do on a wall graphic, like sports stars. First thing I got to do is I got the image, but now I got to get a contour cut around it. Illustrator does not handle this that well. Watch. Select. Bitmap. Make transparent. So I'm going to select the white behind it and make it transparent. And the spot between his legs, add, that's also going to go transparent. Now, you go over here and you click OK. All right? So the dancing ants, a little hard to see them here, are going to get converted 
into a backdrop that now all I got to do is go effect, contour cut. There's my contour line. Want to add holes? Good. Now we put the little hole in the middle there. That's pretty big on the outside, so I'm going to bring that in. See me bringing it in? You can change it to any color you want. I tend to do red, or I sometimes do lime green. That way, when I see red, I know that's my kiss cut. All right? That is, like, incredibly easy to do. This is what Flexi is good at. Flexi is way better than Illustrator. The other thing you can do out of here is if you just want to make like cut letters, you know, like you know, everywhere you see signs, window signage, you know, a, a, an acrylic sign face with like Eat It Joe's. Well, all you got to do is go in, create a box, type it in, Eat It Joe's. Eat at Joe's. Not original. I don't know if we have Joe's anymore. And then you just create a box around it and, you know, you're good to go. And actually... I just threw a contour cut around it. Should have done this. But you create your boxes. Let me get rid of that. I got to get rid of the fill. No fill. And I want a wireframe. Black around the edges. So, oops, created another one. What you're doing is you can take this, put it inside of here, and then just send it over and do a reverse cut or whatever you want to do, and now you're just using the cutter. Okay, So if I have black, red, orange, whatever, just loaded rolls, you can treat this entire design program like your source to create all your files, like eight feet or eight inches tall by, you know, 24 inches long, and it slides into a sign face, and you're just going to do black translucent lettering, and it's going to go into a light box. Easy. You don't need to print it. All you're going to do is use black cut vinyl. It'll save you a bunch of money. And then just from here, instead of print, you just go in and hit cut. And now it's using the cutter as a plotter cutter, and you're bypassing the printer altogether. Get it? Again, super easy. It has all of the features that you expect with Flexi Designer, which is really, I mean, it's about a $1,000 program, which has um, all of the editing for contours for bitmaps, creating contours on existing vector images, tracing. I use this all the time if I have a low-res bitmap. You know, people are always sending you low-res bitmap, and they're like, hey, I want to take this postage stamp, which is like, you know, 150 DPI, and I want to make a wall image out of it. Like, okay, you're never getting there. That's not going to happen. What I need to do is take your postage stamp, scan it, or in this case, you know, bring it in, and then I will trace it. I will do an automatic trace vectorize it, edit it, clean it up, and now I can make it scalable to any size I want. That's all in this version of Flexi. All right, so Flexi Designer merges with Flexi RIP. What I do very frequently is I import files. So when you hit import, like I have all these files in here, right? It has a huge library of all readable files. It's like a giant junkyard. Clipart, Casmate, AutoCAD, Corel Draw, GIFs, Gerbers, AI, PDFs. So any file format you're likely to get, Flexi will probably read it. It has a filter for it. You bring it in, you edit it, and then what I do is I save it out. And you see here it says FX file. That's my original here. That's my original there. That's my version that has the cut contour. So when I look at my file in my folders, here, there's an original file that came in from the customer, and then there's the file I made with all of the finished cut contours on it in a flexi format, which is what I send out to. That makes it very easy for me to always know what's the finished file, what's the working file. All right? So that's your two pieces of flexi, and that's a very, very robust sign software right there. I mean, that's all you need, and it's expandable, and you own it, and it supports fan tones, and it also supports profiling. You really never need another software. You could run an entire, sh I could run my entire shop here, which is seven printers and four cutters off this version of Flexi. I would not have a roll-in cutter in the group, though. All right, moving on a little bit. I want to show you some other features. This is called Print OS. This is sort of the landing site for what we've created for all of our printers. It comes completely free. This was built originally around our multi-million dollar web presses and our indigos, 
And once we build something, there's no reason not to integrate it all the way downstream. This is what you get when you log in. So it says, hey, Timothy Mitchell, production manager. These are all of my devices. And then when you go to different tabs here, this is just sort of like a, it's sort of like a mall. So you go my applications, and then down here on the applications, you have all these stores. Now, some of them you're going to use a lot, like maybe configuration center. What this is going to show you is, and we have little tutorials, where all your printers are, are your firmware updates, packages to install. So every printer that we have is listed in here for latex, indigo, and everything else. Um, this one needs, for example, color calibration. Everything here sends, says it's fine. Do we need print head alignment? This allows me to manage an entire fleet of printers in a remote location. Next kind of cool features we have, let me show you the media locator because this is really important. The media locator is the tool that HP builds where we certify media. So you go HP Latex, hit your little filter, type in what printer model you've got. I have a 315. And then if you want to do manufacturers, so let's say we did Avery. They make a ton of vinyl, right? Avery Denison. There we go. This is what we have for Avery Denison in our menu that's profiled for the 315. So we have pages. Let me go to 25 because I need to show you like just how many are in here. We have Avery vinyl coming out our ears. All of this has been sent to our testing lab. The testing lab evaluated it. It gives it the logo. That's your certified logo and says, we've done a 16 point inspection. We cannot find anything that would prevent this media from running at the highest standards we could with our printers. And you can see it's a long list. These down here are profiled only, which means either they didn't want to spend the money to go through the full testing or it got say 14 out of the 16. But in both cases, we believe that it will run fine. And so this is an enormous amount of material. So if you want this, you just figure out what you want, go to the printer panel, download it straight into the printer, you're good to go. What we're trying to do is create custom color work for every single media that we support. And we support medias across every single media manufacturer in the world. To give you an idea, this is our manufacturer list. And it goes on. And it goes on. So if it's made somewhere in the world, we probably have it certified for our latex printers. You do not have to use generic presets. You can if you like. We have generics, or you can build your own, or you can go to the media locator, which is what I do 95% of the time, and I just download it right into the printer, which is what I did a little earlier. This is an extremely important tool across any anything you're likely to print on. Okay, moving on a little bit. We have the marketplace in there, which links to a whole bunch of different things, color beat, training, all this other stuff. We also have the application center. Application center is a uh, online based customer focused tool where your customers can go on and create, for example, their own artwork their own posters from our tool and then send you the finished file. So we have a whole bunch of templates that we've already made for this. It goes through a whole tour. I'll skip it for now. But if you have people who want posters, you can see like we have all these different posters. So when summer comes, did it drop or did I have to double click it? Mm, I'll double click. There we go. And then the customer can go in and adjust this as they see fit. All this is editable, okay? What we did is created like a super easy version of like design your own posters, design your own signs, so they can build what they want. They can also get, in, you know, get content that you put up there for them, and then they can make all their own stuff and send it to you. So if you set this up cleverly, and then it will you know, move to the next step here, you can actually get your customers to do most of the graphic design work for you while they sit around all afternoon and move things around and change everything. So 
if we have the settings right, it would say this is twenty six eighty seven. What it's going to cost? Want to add it to your order? This can only be used through your login. So they log in, they get permissions, and then they send the files to you. It cannot go to a third party. It cannot go anywhere else. So it kind of encourages them to stay within your format, and then all this is available to you. That this I could do like an hour on all by itself, the application center. And it covers window blinds, canvas posters, window graphics, vehicle stickers. You know, we just create templates and then they can edit everything. Also, they can do t-shirts, sweatshirts. I do a lot of heat transfer, a lot of heat transfer. And I'll show you in a second. I use uh, Chemica, I use Caesar, and I use Polytape heat transfer film all the time. They're all certified. I make a ton of t-shirts. We also have an interaction from the printer itself. This is a very rich interface. Among this, there's an accounting software. Every job I send is based on cost assignment where we calculate the printhead, the ink, and the cleaning cartridge into a total price of $165. That's all consumables, not just ink. Then you add your media. So 54 inches, 150 feet, $230 and then a fixed cost, and then it gives you accounting on every single thing that goes through. So I know that this job for 3MIJ40 costs exactly $3.83 every time I send it. That's the cost of it. If I want to export that to Excel, it will do a complete breakdown. It will also break everything down based on how much ink it uses for each one. This is not an estimator. This is the real deal. Every single drop that goes through the printer we measure it, we calculate it, we record it. You can use this data with an estimator like in Flexi or, or anything else and give it very accurate numbers to compare to so that you can refine your estimating data based on what you truly know for ink and media usage here. You want to analyze this better, you can export this entire thing to Excel so then you can have a bookkeeper look at everything. Knowing what, you, knowing what things cost is critical for you to be successful. And you can break all this down and figure out what type of stuff you print, how much you print, what your usage is. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff in here. So this lists everything that I've run, all this other stuff. Also, Flexi has a whole bunch of software that supports it. So when you want to run Flexi, Flexi, we have training modules. We have an online process to get onboarded. And... If you check Flexi and you look at videos, Flexi has, I learned running Flexi from these videos. This one in particular, the one with the little uh, like uh, piranha fish thing. They walk through everything for you. So if you don't know how to use Flexi, Flexi has great training. Go try to get great training with Illustrator like this. And everything is set up for the sign and display industry. It's not set up for graphic design. It's not making a magazine. You are making signs. And this is helpful for the sign industry. And then lastly, I want to mention the HP support. So HP YouTube has a support site, and I use this all the time. I have about 250 videos. Um, some of these, oh, there's Paul. So Paul's on the thing. There's me and Paul going over pinch holder replacement on the cutter, take-up reel, latex printers, panel printing, and counterweight assembly. Whatever you want to know about, like this I typed in latex tiling, but if you just typed in latex on our support site, YouTube, you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of videos, all right? Tiling tips and tricks. The more specific you are, it will find a keyword and it will walk through it. So there's like really fat me and there's, oh, I'm big there. And then see, I lost some weight. So this whole thing is like a testament to me losing about 80 pounds. Yep. That's Big Me. Anyway, Big Me is all over there, and uh, Paul's on there. We have a whole bunch of videos to kind of help you understand the technology. This is a very good way. If you wanted to print on fabric, for example, latex, fabric. Good. There's all your fabric videos, tons of them. So you can kind of use this like you want to know about wall covering or canvas or fabric or tiling or print and cut. It'll just help you sort things out, and then I do like between a two-minute and six-minute, eight-minute little video that walks you through the things that I think are most important to know for best practices. HP officially has a thing called the Knowledge Center, and this is also cool. 
lot of the videos are here as well. And this is a forum, so you can ask questions here, anything you want to ask. And believe me, people do. I mean, you got a problem, I, I see them on here. So, you know, we don't, we don't edit this. this is, these are real live customers. And then we answer the questions, we have a full blog, and then we have a whole bunch of information there, and you can search at the top. So if you wanted to know print and cut, I don't know why it always takes twice. Okay, it's waiting, knowledge center. All right. So here's print and cut. Here's a bunch of conversations, a bunch of articles. And then as you go down here, latex blog, case studies, and then best practices for printing aluminum. We also have a lot of our flatbeds and stuff on here. The more specific you are, the better answer you're going to get. So that is our software support which is PrintOS, all the stores in PrintOS, which is all listed here, they all come in there. And then you have the Flexi videos, the HP videos, the Media Locator, the Application Center with all of these tools. You have the interface program that connects to the printer. And then also you have uh, our particular support videos for YouTube. And now I'm going to switch back to the main screen and I'm going to walk on over here and say, webcam close. We're going to share the webcam again, share my webcam. Is the webcam back? Yep. It should be. Yes. Yep. Back webcam back. Yep. 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 Okay. Great. Last thing I want to cover, and then we'll do some questions. This is a very, very small segment of what you can do with the printer. Now, I know that this is mainly focused at print and cut. And print and cut is primarily adhesive vinyl of all types, including wall coverings, okay? All your wall covering peel and stick, floor graphics, all that stuff, plus T-shirts. So here's some of my... Um, Here's some of my t-shirt material. This is a poly tape, and I think I have a Caesar in here as well. I think this is a Caesar product that we transferred onto the t-shirts. Very successful with t-shirts, extremely easy to do. All you need is a inexpensive heat press. I actually have my heat press from US Cutter. It works great. It's super easy to use. All I gotta do is print it, cut it, weed it, transfer it to t-shirt, drop the lever, follow the instructions, peel it off the top, presto, I have a t-shirt. It's super easy. Um, they're durable, they look great. We have them all certified. We have a large selection of materials. There's all different types, thinner, softer, matte, gloss. Those are all your choices. But we also have, I mean, it's endless, backlit textile. So if you wanna print on backlit fabric, we have durable, uh, meets a four or better on a dry crock test, backlit fabric that you could put sewn into a, um, a light box. We have durable front lit fabrics of all types. We have papers. I print on easy dot window film, all your window clings, window films, all certified. More papers, canvases, high performance suede. So if you want to print on uh, type two PVC, high performance um, paste based wall covering, you can use these printers to do that. You can print on, um, Roll-up film, there's catwalk. Catwalk is a textured floor graphic. I put this on carpeting and floors. I built my own custom preset for this. No problem whatsoever. You have PVC wall covering, more canvas, translucent vinyl. So you print on it with this Orifol. It uh, goes onto an acrylic sign face. You slide that into the sign box. Now you have outdoor durable. We have Ultraflex Blockout Pro. So all types of scrim banner every type imaginable. I do a ton with this Ultraflex Ultra Blockout 15 out, no problem. We have double-sided capability on a 365. So in addition, you can print duplexing on the 365 on up. Aurora Taffeta, more adhesive vinyl, more fabric. Taffeta is sort of a very similar product that you probably know called Phototex. I have Phototex right here. Phototex is widely used. Again, certified, they're opaque, prints beautiful. 
there's five or six major products very similar to this, which is a peel and stick wall covering. If you get the cutter right, you can also cut this and then have peel and stick uh, fabric or PET uh, textured wall covering that you can stick onto the wall, which in many cases is repositionable. So the thing that I really want to emphasize, here's some more classic view clear focus, natural fibers. I print on linens and cottons and jute. And we have a program for this. And if you heat fix it, it has washable durability. So now you can make totes and bags and drape. I make a lot of uh, window curtains with this. This is a natural linen. Very, very nice. High end. It's a great market to be in. All of these things are printable with a latex printer. The versatility of the printer is without question in my mind the best in the industry. I mean, it prints on almost anything on a three inch core and good news is you have two inch core converters built right in so if you get a two inch core you can use that too so key is your breadth of printability it's not just a decal printer it'll do all those other things you may not want to use it for that but keep in mind down the road if you choose to you can it's available to you and we have all the media evaluated and certified so all you got to do is go on the media locator Say, hey, I want to find some of that durable textile. You know, the stuff that has pretty good scratch and scuff resistance. No problem. These are all the durable textiles. They have a category. You choose one, order it, load it in, download it into the printer, put it up on the take-up reel, and send the print. Okay? I think I've covered about everything I can cover in an hour. Um, we'll open it up for some questions. I'd be more than happy to take them. Uh, thank you all for uh, bearing with a like fire hose of information that we try to cover here. And uh, hopefully you're able to retain most of it. Some of this, you know, we could do a breakout just on the cutter or the printer for an hour, but we're going to try to cover as much ground so you have an understanding of what the HP Latex Print and Cup bundle is. Yeah, so for the most part, we've been kind of on top of questions. One of the, but, but, you know, if you guys have questions now, we're Yay! Um, but Paul and uh, we, Paul and Paul and Dennis took care of all that. Uh, kind of, sorta. It was a little bit of a roundabout, but we got it done. Um, if you guys okay. have questions, submit those into the questions now, and we'll start answering those. One of the first questions we had was just how is the photo quality compared to your inkjet printers? Oh, great question. Um, so I actually have a a Z. Uh, oh my brain, uh, a Z sixty two hundred. Okay. So that, until recently, we then we had a Z68, and then we also have like the Z3200, and now the Z9 and Z6s. If you were doing like Getty Museum, or you're doing super high-end point of purchase, point of sale, those printers have a, a potential higher resolution and a smaller drop size. I think they go down to 6 and or 9. So the drop size is going to be a little smaller. And they're also going to be uh, a little higher resolution. I think they go to 2400, depending on which of the printers. Now, some of some of the photo ones are designed like the 6200 was a split the difference between a 3200, which was super like that's your G clay printer, 12 color, slow, super like color gamut. That's what super high end photographers would use, or true fine art reproduction. The 6200 is like an extra red, and so you have a bigger gamut, and, a, and still you want to get speed out of it. The latex is going to be very similar to a 6200 for all operations, but I'm not going to be able to compete with something like if I were to print to mount, put it behind glass, I would go with a 6200. Keep in mind, 6200 uses more expensive ink, more expensive print heads, and it runs um, and materials paper that usually cost two and three times more than I run on the latex. So on the latex, here's a still tri -solve. This is a very nice paper and I get very nice point of sale, point of purchase. Very few people complain about it. What I'm giving is a much lower cost paper that is very easy to handle. I don't have to wear my gloves. My 6200, I'm always using my cotton gloves because the coated medias are expensive and the coated media it's very your print quality is very dependent on that coated media i don't use coated media with a latex i can load anything on it so i'm going to use some much less expensive paper that's thick 
has a nice poster quality. Almost nobody's going to see this and go, no, it doesn't meet my specs. Unless your spec was already established by like a high-end uh, Z3200 or a high-end Canon or something. But we're, we're taking a lot of that market because a lot of the point of purchase point is they really didn't need fine art level reproduction. I'm running at 1200 DPI, 12 peak liter drop with a six color. A lot of the HP photo printers are running between eight and 12 colors and they're using a slightly smaller drop. But I can take about half of what they do or more on the latex side and still maintain the quality that a customer would expect. It's kind of a long answer. It's an interesting thing to me because I like to do fine art reproduction. On a, a GK printing is kind of a hobby of mine. But man, I go to the latex most of the time now because it's just super easy to use. I don't have to handle anything. I can run all kinds of media. My media prices drop, my ink prices drop, and I can have much more durability with it without getting fingerprints and everything on it. So the whole process of getting it to the market is just easier for me unless the customer says, I really need to have that extra gamut. Um, another question we have is, what are the main reasons to get the 315 over the 115? And then we also had a question about car wrapping and uh, graphics, if there's any samples of that. Okay. All right. So your 115 is essentially a 315 with smaller ink. That is the main difference. Also, the 115 does not normally ship with a take-up reel. Okay. It's designed for really like you've got a small shop and you do kind of print on demand. Print here, print there. You're not printing all the time. You're not running it every day. We're going to save you some on the overall cost. Your ink prices are going to go up when you compare per liter. So your, your costs per cartridge are going to be more when you look at the same amount of ink. Our rule at HP is simple. The bigger the box of ink, the less it costs you. So the smaller box of ink, the cutter that comes with it on the printer cut is very similar to this one, but it doesn't have as many options for adjustment. Um, it's like what we did is we took a 315 bundle and we just found ways to slice a few things off of it so we could get the price down, like the take-up reel. Now, the 315 does not come with the take-up reel, but I always recommend buying it with it because I run this cutter onto the take-up reel. This is something I totally, dumb me, forgot to add. The cutter has these. I even had this thing sitting out and I still forgot it. The cutter has this, and these are end caps. So I run to the core, okay, all the time. So I just send job after job after job, and I send them over to the cutter, and I put this in the back of the cutter, and there's little grooves for this and the other counterpart. And then I send it to find the first barcode, and here's where it's cool. It just keeps finding barcodes. It goes, okay, next barcode, got it, print, cut, print, cut, find it, cut, find it, cut. And it will do the whole roll nonstop and drop into that basket and it doesn't go anywhere and it's perfect, but you have to have a take up reel to do it. So the 315, I really might recommend bundled with a take up. And then the 115 is how I would look at it of, Hey man, I don't really do enough to do take up. You know, I get a job here. It's like 20 decals. It's on a sheet or it's on the roll, but I cut it as a sheet and then I back, back box them up and send them away. Those are your primary differences between the two. There's one other one. The 115 is designed to arrive in a box and you do your own training. We have like an online webinar that walks you through it. It is easy. Okay? Our engineers are like the best in the world at letting you put your little printer together. It is not hard. You follow the instructions. You cannot get it wrong. I tested it on my wife. Okay? She had no problem figuring the whole thing out. It's all color coded. But you don't get the hand holding you get when a 315 is installed, which is a little more of people walk you through some of the things on site. So you have different on-site presence between the two, and I think that can make a difference. Okay, and then how about okay. graphic, graphics, wrapping, um, stuff like that for cars? Yes, definitely. Uh, we have a warranty with 3M, which is IJ180 and 480 and all the 3M wrap products. Those are all certified. Avery, all certified. Orafal Oracle, all certified. Arlon, all certified. I love that new Arlon uh, cast vinyl. So pretty much every wrap film that is in existence in the world today, we have a profile for it. It's certified. And in almost all cases, we have a color fast warranty as well. 
Now, anything that's going to go in a vehicle wrap, you're going to have to laminate it for that warranty. That's just sort of a standard. So it will bundle, you know, you would print, laminate, and then cut. But yes, we 100% are a huge, the big advantage with latex on vehicle wraps is when you print on latex and you do laminate, you have no wait time. Everything with latex is like print and go. So you print it, it's completely dry off the printer, you go to the cutter and you ship it. There's no wait till it dries or gases off or any of that. So print, laminate, cut, install. If you goof up a panel, all you got to do is print another panel, laminate it, stick it on. With solvent, you have wait times and gas off times built in, 24 hours. So if you are a solvent, you have a car there and you goof up a panel, technically you can't print it again, laminate it, and stick it on there. That will violate the warranty. There's going to be a problem with that laminate and that solvent because it hasn't fully cured. And it's not necessarily latex. It's print, laminate, install, or if you don't laminate, just print and do whatever you want with it. Everything on latex is dry and ready to install off the printer, whatever it is you want to do with it. Um, we'll I'm talking a little louder because they flipped on one of our machinery. We got these uh, giant mich like web presses. They look like aircraft engines. I think one of them just came online. So I, I don't think we can hear that. I do, I do want to get two more questions, and then I think we're going to call okay. it for today. Um, but the first one, uh, this sh shouldn't be too crazy, I guess, but what is the average life of a latex printer, any model? Oh, okay. So a latex printer, we have a ton of still 25500s, which was Gen 1. So those things are like 10 years old, and that is not uncommon at all. I have a latex 360 in the house that I goof around with, and that's now six years old. Um, it is very, very common to have really long printer life, okay? The printer life is, so these were based originally on the HP 5000 platform, which was a legendary platform that built our reputation. And the latex comes from the same engineering team, the same um, assembly line. Everything that we make has been tried and true over decades. So the printers themselves are very reliable. They're very easy to use. They're super easy to repair. Everything is modular. So if I have to fix it and I take the cowling off, everything is labeled out and is super easy. Usually HP will send a part and then a technician the next day if you're under warranty. It is not uncommon to have printers in excess of 10 years at all. The key reason is this. Our print heads are cheap and they're user replaceable. So in seven years, a latex printer, people are still buying new print heads, okay? Still buying new ink. As long as your print heads are solid and the rest of the machine is working, your print quality is just the same as you day you bought it. With a piezo, as those heads die, it does not make economic sense to replace them. The cost of the head replacement is more than the value of the printer, in many cases, by a factor of two or three. So the printer is now worth $3,000, but it's going to cost you $8,000 to put new print heads in. <clears throat> so it doesn't make any sense. So you just get another printer. The only way you can run that printer is super, super slow to try to hide the banding, and eventually you can't even hide the banding. And you can't replace your print head. With a latex, just buy new print heads. That's why there's a lot of these older latexes still on the market, like 260s, because they don't die. The printer mechanically is sound. And if you bought one, you have water-based ink. So it's, you know, it doesn't, if they sit, it doesn't clog all the lines or anything. And you just put new print heads in it. And presto, your printer has been sitting there for two years in a warehouse runs great. So very common to have. It's actually kind of a curse for us because nobody ever gives them up. And we support inks and print heads by warrant, you know, by obligation for as long as we possibly can. But other companies, their printers are like gone in four years, gone in five, and ours are in six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, very common. And don't get rid of it. You know, if you have an old 260 and you add a new printer, just run it into the ground. Okay. And then what about um, the HP 115? Can you use the bigger inks in that? No. Nope. Nope. It won't take them. They're all chipped. Our inks are chipped, and so if you try to put the bigger inks in, it'll go, uh, that doesn't go in here. You bought the wrong printer. <laughs> well, I won't say that, but yeah, it won't work. Okay. It's one or the other. 
the last question we would have then is going to be, how do you get to the accounting and wall art slash design pages that were shown earlier in the print oh, print OS? Yeah, no. Well, print OS is going to be in the future where we put all that data. That's where we're moving is towards the secure cloud-based integration with print OS. That's where we're headed. Like we're just a, a year away or so from having that fully integrated for the uh, low volume latex. Right now, the way you get to that is you type in the IP address of the printer and then that IP address will bring up that screen. That is your communication point between the printer and your computer. So if I gave you an OMS file, which is an HP proprietary file, but like let's say I made a, a, an unbelievable profile for just a catwalk, I can share this with you and I can give you that OMS file. You open it in the embedded web server and then the embedded web server, you bring the file in that will send it to the printer and the printer will go, do you want to install this? I say, yes, I do. And you're good to go. So your accounting software is in there. All of your maintenance schedules, all of your connection to service, print head health evaluation, uh, security networks, security, everything. Just type in the IP address of the printer in a browser and it will all come up for you and you'll see the accounting tab in there. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have other questions, please feel free to reach out to the sales team at uh, US Cutter. We're always happy to take those. Uh, if we don't know the answer, we'll find it for you is uh, pretty much what I always say. You can also hit us up on social media. And again, if uh, I don't know the answer, then I will find it for you guys. Uh, Timothy, I want to thank you for being a part of this with us today and taking everybody through this. It was really in depth and I think it was really great. Uh, had a great time having you on with us.